विवेक चूड़ा मणि ऑफ आदि शंकराचार्य दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट विद स्टेंजा नंबर 184 विज्ञान मया कोशा इंटेलेक्चुअल शीत बुद्धि बुद्धि इंद्रिय ही सार्ध है सवृति ही कृत्रिम लक्षण है विज्ञान में कोश है सयात पुंस संसार कारणम द इंटेलेक्ट विद इट्स मॉडिफिकेशन अलॉन्ग विद द ऑर्गन्स ऑफ परसेप्शन फॉर्म द इंटेलेक्चुअल सीथ विज्ञान मया कोशा इट हैज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द एजेंट और डूअर विच इज द कॉज फॉर ट्रांसमाइग्रेशन द विज्ञान में कोशा इंटेलेक्चुअल सीत कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स द इंटेलेक्ट द सेंस ऑर्गन ऑफ परसेप्शन एंड ऑल द डिफरेंट मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ द इंटेलेक्ट इट कंट्रोल्स द ऑर्गन ऑफ परसेप्शन दिस इंटेलेक्चुअल सीत इन मैन वेल्स द इनफिनिट रियलिटी इट इज द कॉज फॉर संसार the modifications of the intellect are the awareness of doing and the concept of i am the doer this concept creates more and more vasanas in order to exhaust the vasanas the individual has to move from one field to of enjoyment to another so there are births and deaths again and again how this vigyanamaya kosha is the cause for sansar is explained in the following verse verse number 185 ano vrajya chitta pratibimb shakti vigyan sangah prakrte vikar hai gyan kriya van mitte jansaram देह इंद्रिय आदि व भी मन्यते भर्षम अकम्पनीड बाई ए रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द लाइट ऑफ चित द इंटेलेक्टुअल सीथ इज ए मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ प्रकृति इट इज एंडोड विद द फंक्शन ऑफ नॉलेज एंड इज ऑलवेज कंप्लीटली आइडेंटिफाइड विद द बॉडी सेंस ऑर्गन एट्सेट्रा द विज्ञान में कोसा इज constantly accompanied by the reflection of the light of chit consciousness consciousness is all pervasive at all times the world of plurality floods up within it it as it were consciousness reflected in the intellect is intelligence just as the electricity reflected in or functioning in the bulb is light in the fan is rotation in the heater is heat and in the refrigerator is cold in sankras and the vedic times there was no electricity so he has taken the example of the sun being reflected in conditioned by functioning through playing in a bucket of water this mighty power of eternal consciousness god which is the spark of life in every one of us is not confined to the within it is present everywhere at all times this consciousness playing in the pools of thought is the individual in whom it generates the doership idea where the doership has ended there the individuality has also ended this idea is explained in the upanishads through the reflection theory pratibimbavada 
द मैटर वेस्टर्स के नॉट फंक्शन बाई देम सेल्स इन द एबसेंस ऑफ कॉन्सियसनेस दे आर आफ्टर ऑल कंपोज ऑफ इनर्ट सेल्स द इंटेलिजेंस इज देयर ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉन्सियसनेस प्लेइंग थ्रू द इंटेलेक्ट इन अस द मैटर इक्विपमेंट द इंटेलेक्ट बिकम्स ब्रिलियंट बिकॉज ऑफ द लाइट ऑफ कॉन्सियसनेस द इंटेलेक्ट बाई इट सेल्फ हैज नो इंटेलिजेंस इट इज लाइक ए मिरर इन डार्कनेस द फंक्शन ऑफ दिस इंटेलिजेंस द विज्ञान में कोसा इज टू नो ज्ञाना इज इट्स मैन फंक्शन इट गिवस राइज टू द कंसेप्ट ऑफ आई द नोवर द माइंड प्रोजेक्ट द वर्ल्ड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड द इंटेलेक्ट इल्यूमिन्स देम विद इट्स इंटेलिजेंस विच इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द लाइट ऑफ कॉन्सियसनेस and there arises the notion of i know this process of mental projection and intellectual recognition goes on at all times and the feelings of i and mine are created the feelings of i is with reference to the body the sense organs pranas and the mind the feeling of mine is with reference to the world of objects this intellect due to the light of consciousness playing in it develops the capacity to illumine things projected by the mind and as a final result of all these it comes to identify with the body the sense organs etc it becomes the restless ego the i-ness and identifying with the objects perceived by the sense organs it provides the myness thereafter starts the i and my play which we call sansar this great tyrannical power which enters our bosom loops our discrimination and ties us down to our limitations is none other than the vigyan maya kosha if a person withdraws from this seat he shall have neither this iness nor this myness nor will he identify any longer with the body the sense organs etc and have the feeling of mind regarding the world of objects around him stanza number 186 anadi kalo yam ham sambhavo jivah samast vivahar vodha kroti karmane api purav vasne punya anya punyani cha tat phalani stanza number 187 bhukte vichitra vapi yoni su vrajan nyayati niryatadde और धव में से असह्यव विज्ञान में से जागृत है स्वप्नाद्य अवस्था सुख दुख भोग है इट इज विदाउट बिगिनिंग इज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ द ईगो एंड इज कॉल्ड द जीवा व्हिच कैरीज आउट द एंटायर रेंज ऑफ एक्टिव एक्टिविटीज ऑन द रिलेटिव प्लान इट परफॉर्म्स गुड एंड इवल एक्शंस अकॉर्डिंग टू इट्स प्रीवियस वासनाज एंड एक्सपीरियंसिस देयर रिजल्ट्स इट कम्स एंड गोज अप एंड डाउन टेकिंग बर्थ इन द वेरियस बॉडी द वेकिंग ड्रीम एंड अदर स्टेट्स एंड द एक्सपीरियंसिस ऑफ जॉय एंड सोरो बिलोंग टू दिस इंटेलेक्चुअल सीथ the concept of i is beginningless it started even before the beginning of time before one recognizes an object there must already be an i if there be an object and the i is not present there cannot be an experience for every experience the i factor representing the subject is indispensable i the ego myself and the subject so the first object that 
emerged at the beginning of creation must have been the first thought at zero time. When I arrogated the first thought to myself, the concept of I do arose. Thus the ego is beginningless, anadi. This I-ness, ahem, swabhava, which is beginningless, is the jiva, the individuality. All activities on the relative plane are carried out by this jiva. The light of consciousness conditioned by thought carries out all the activities in the world. When the last thought is ended, there is no more an ego and so no more any actions. To realize consciously and dynamically, this state of actionlessness is called Samadhi. The Jiva carries out the activities of the world in strict adherence to a blueprint provided by itself. This blueprint, the peculiar mode of one's activities, is determined by vasanas acquired earlier. <clears throat> the activity may be good, bad or indifferent. It is all ordered by the texture of one's vasanas. Accordingly, when the jiva acts in the world ordered by its past vasanas, the activities produce results. These fruits are enjoyed by the jiva under finite varieties of physical environments. In order to act as per the old vasanas and to enjoy the fruits of actions, the individual has to take birth in various fields of activities, high and low, with reference to this relative existence. The three states of consciousness, the waking, dream and deep sleep are conditionings of this Vigyanamaya Kosha. <clears throat> the experiencer of joy and sorrow in these three states of consciousness is this intellectual seat. In whatever state there is an experience, the concept of I is immanent. Stranger number 188. <clears throat> De Adi Nishta Asram Dharam Karam Guna Abhimanam Satatam Mameti Vigyan Koso Me Prati Prakash Parkrasht Sanidhe Vashayu Pratmana Ato Bhavtesh Upadhirsha Yadat Madho Sansarati Bharman Identifying with the attributes of the orders of life, their duties and functions which actually belong to the body, it considers themselves, them as its own. The Vigyanmaya Kosa is extremely radiant because of its nearness to the Supreme Self. It is a superimposition on the Self which when it identifies with it suffers transmigration through delusion. The intellectual seat is subtler than the mental, the vital air and food seats. Owing to its subtlety, it has the maximum pervasiveness. In the order of seats, it is nearest to the Atman, the Self. Consequently, it is extremely brilliant compared with all other seats. It has more reflectiveness. This seat is the conditioning nearest to reality. The term Atma Dhihi is indicative of the ego. Jiva at the same time defining the individuality. The Atma conditioned in the intellect is the individuality, the ego. This Jiva is the factor which undergoes the phenomenon of coming and going, the phenomenon of transmigration. Transmigration is occasioned by the delusion of not knowing the self as the reality and considering the not-self, the jiva to be the reality. 
atma plus dhi atam dhi that is jiva ego the light of consciousness in us the atman functioning in the thought springs dhi is the ego the jiva so atam dhi means the individuality the pft the ego Pratibhimba, Vada, the theory that the ego is the reflection of the self in the intellect. Atma unattached. Stranger number 189. Yoyam vigyaname praneshu hirdi safurtayam jyoti kutastha sannatma karta bhogta Bhavtu Padhista, the Atman which is knowledge absolute shines within the pranas in the heart, though it is immutable. It becomes the doer and the experiencer because of its superimposition, the intellectual sheath. In Vedanta, it has been constantly asserted that the seat of the intellect is in the heart and that in the cave of the heart is the intellect and in the midst of the intellect is the shining atman this is just a poetic expression a man with noble emotions is called a man of heart and he who is bereft of emotion is called heartless the mind full of love is called the heart. When I enter a rocky cave, then above me, below me, to my sides and in front, in fact, everywhere there is nothing but rock. In the same way, when I enter the heart cave, all around me, there can only be heart. Heart means love, pure love. In such an atmosphere of universal love, the seeker's intellect must function. In the cave of the intellect is Brahma. That is when the intellect is contemplating upon the Atma in an atmosphere of universal love, it will be able to recognize the self as the light illumining its meditative single-pointed thought. Therefore, the teachers of Vedanta say that in the Herde is the Buddhi. The heart agitated with likes and dislikes is called the mind. The mind is the choking cord around the neck of the individual while the heart is the releasing angel that helps one to free oneself from the thraldom of the mind. To achieve it, one has to bring the mind to a single pointed thought. <coughs> this is not possible unless there is love. With love or devotion, when one moves towards the Atman, the mind becomes single pointed with only one thought in it. And he who illumines that thought is Brahma. This condition of meditative poise has been indi indicated in the verse when it says that the intellectual sheath is in the heart. Kutastha means that which remains immutable like an anvil. <coughs> an anvil allows all changes to take place upon it, but itself does not undergo any change. Immutable, therefore, is the significance of the term Kutastha. The Atman, the self as Kutastha, is immutable and as conditioned by the BMI Upadista, it apparently becomes the doer and the enjoyer. This egocentric attitude of the ever-changing, sorrowful, miserable individuality and its experiencerhood comes to the Atma because of the conditionings, Upadis, which are themselves only illusory projections due to man's ignorance. Stanza number 190. Swam preached, Mupete buddhe, Satada, 
दोषेण परम मर्षा तमन सर्वात्मक सन्नपी वीक्षते स्वयं सब तह पृथक तवेन मृदो घटानिव देशात्मा और दो इट इज द सेल्फ इन एवरी एग्जिस्टिंग थिंग अज्यूम्स द लिमिटेशन ऑफ द इंटेलेक्ट एंड रॉन्गली आइडेंटिफाइंग विद दिस एंटायरली फॉल्स एंटिटी इट कंसीडर्स इट सेल्फ एज समथिंग डिफरेंट लाइक द मड पॉट्स फ्रॉम द मड ऑफ विच दे आर मेड द नेचर ऑफ द इनफिनिट कॉन्सियसनेस एवरीवेयर इज वन विदाउट ए सेकेंड even then out of delusion it comes to accept the conditionings as real and continues to identify with the matter vestures having identified with the conditionings it suffers from its sense of limitations thus if the body is slightly indisposed the individual suffers and groans under the indisposition having been conditioned by the intellect a man becomes identified with it and behaves as though he is the experiencer of the joy and sorrows in life all this is indeed false but because of this identification he understands himself to be a separate entity and starts seeking truth which is his very own nature he believes that truth is something other than himself the fallacy in the notion of god being someone other than the devotee is being brought out here very forcefully if the idea that truth is something other than me is accepted i should negate my b m i for they are only my conditionings projected by my imagination all that i have to negate is the ghost which is not there so that i may ultimately understand the post just as when the pots made of mud develop individual identities of name and forms we recognize them as separate from each other but in truth they are they all are in a sense mud only stanza number 191 उपाधि संबंध वशात परात्मा हय्य उपाधि धर्मा अनुभाति तद्गुण अयो विकार विकार विलिवैक रूपोपी पर स्वभावत इवन दो द सुप्रीम सेल्फ इज बाय नेचर परफेक्ट एंड एवर अनचेंजिंग ड्यू टू इट्स रिलेशनशिप विद द सुप्रीम पोजिशन it assumes the characteristics of these superimpositions and seems to act just as the equipments do like the changeless fire assuming the forms of the iron pieces which it turns red hot the supreme reality due to its identification with the conditionings upadhis behaves in accordance with the dharmas of the conditionings life when it functions through the body assumes the qualities of the body a clean glass near a blue cloth appears blue if the cloth is red the glass appears red as the color of the cloth so appears the color of the glass the glass has no color of its own it borrows the color of its environments in the same way the atma feeling functioning through the upadhis acquires the properties of the upadhis for the time being in this verse to indicate the same idea another example is given fire has neither shape nor form 
spherical heat, cubical heat, cylindrical heat, rectangular heat, etc. are not possible, nor has the heat any weight. 10 ohms heat, 1 pound heat, 5 pounds heat too are impossible. But when iron pieces are put in the fire, the fire assumes their shapes and weights. These are not the properties of the fire, but because of the iron pieces, the fire is said to have shape and weight. Paramatman is ever the same. Sada eka rupaha. It is of the nature of existence. It is pure I isness, the suchness in such and such a thing. If that suchness is removed from it, the thing will not have existence. Existence alone is its nature. There is no being or non-being in it. Nothing has ever emerged out of it. In its pure existence state, it is not even consciousness. Consciousness it becomes only when it is illumining objects. It cannot be said to be anything. It is of the nature of existence. No other description is possible and you are that. Even now you are that. Nobody can say, I have no existence. I exist. I am is the universal experience of all. That amness is the truth. It is of one nature because it transcends all nature. As consciousness, you cannot use any other definition. It is indescribable. All descriptions only detail the qualities of the thing described. Qualities are not there in the infinite. The moment properties are seen, it becomes finite. The properties are what you see, hear, smell, taste, touch, feel and think. It is beyond all properties or characteristic features. To understand that I am consciousness and that I have nothing to do with the BMI is the realization of the highest state of spiritual perfection. What is liberation? Disciple. Stanza number 192. Sise uach Bharmena pe netha vastu jeev bhava hai paramatman hai tad upadhirna di anna dhirna si ishate ato shay jeev bhavo api nitya bhavati sansirti ne niv vartet tan moksha katham me sri guru vadde. The Sisse asked that the Supreme Self has come to consider itself as the Jiva through illusion or otherwise is a superimposition which is beginningless. That which is beginningless cannot be said to have an end. So the Jivahood of the Self must also be without an end ever subject to transmigration. Please tell me, O oh, revered teacher, how then there can be liberation for the self? The disciple Shisha has understood what the Master Guru had been explaining so far. Here a doubt arises in the minds of all those who have been closely following the arguments. Naturally, the Sisa has his doubt and he put it to the Guru. However, may it be by confusion, delusion or whatever else, the Paramatman, the Supreme Reality has come to this attitude of a limited ego, Jiva Bhava, the conditioning due to which the Paramatmam has apparently become the Jiva is said to be Maya. Maya is beginningless Anadi. That which is beginningless cannot have an end. Hence Maya can never end. It can never be destroyed. 
once the Paramatman has entered this Maya, his Jiva Bhava becomes eternal. If the Jiva Bhava is eternal, the coming and going, the transmigration, samsarti must also be everlasting. This birth and death phenomenon for the Paramatman who has once identified with the conditionings become eternal. If it be so, if, if it be so, dear sir, how can one get liberation? O oh, Guru, please tell me. This is the crux of the humbly worded, meek sounding, respectful question put by the Shisha to the Guru. <coughs> Self knowledge gives liberation. Sri Guru Vache. Stranger number 194. Samyak postam tavaya vidvansa vadhane trichanu pramani ki ne bhauti brhantya mohit kalpana. The Guru replied, O learned boy, you have put a proper question. Listen them carefully. Things conjured up by imagination, which is itself a product of delusion, can never be accepted as facts. Having heard the question asked by the student, the Guru replies. While replying, he appreciated the Sisya's close observation of the logic and compliments and compliments him on the very way the question has been put. He says, well put indeed is your question, O intelligent boy, now carefully and attentively listen to my reply. The imagination created by delusory thinking cannot be accepted as real. The very thought to begin with that there are the equipments is a delusory misconception. Identification with them is a subsequent delusion. These are all imagined due to one's inner confusions. Whatever has been seen in a dream cannot condition the waker. A sumptuous dinner enjoyed in the dream will not remove any hunger in the waking state. As the imagination conjured up by delusion can never become a fact. If what you say is a fact then of course moksha is impossible. Because of the logic given by you admits the Guru and adds, but the mind itself is a delusion. Through a delusion you have created an imagination. This avidya ends only when true wisdom comes. Therefore, my dear boy, the idea that there cannot be any moksha is not true. <coughs> Thus, Though avidya is beginningless, anadi it can end an antavati. Antavati when truth is realized. Stanza number 195. Bhranti vina tau sangasse niskriyasse nirakarte ne ghateta arthi sambandho nabso nilta divati. For the self which is unattached, without activity and formless, there can be no connection with the world of objects other than the delusion, just like the blueness, etc., seen in the sky. Continuing his reply, the Guru adds, the supreme reality is unattached, has no actions and no forms. It is one without a second. There is nothing other than it for it to get attached to. The self has no activity for it has no limbs to act with. There are no motivations in it. Agging it on to act. It has no fields to act in, no objective to gain 
no motivation to act, being all pervadive, it has no form. The concept of any connection between the self and the objects is a delusory misconception. Without delusory misconceptions and imaginations conjured up by delusion, avidya, there cannot be a world of objects. Only when there is a world of objects can we have any relationship and identification with it. Only then can we try to make one thing out of another that is perform action. <clears throat> the idea that the sky is blue, murky, dirty or golden is a delusion. The sky can never be contaminated by color or dirt. Yet we see the blue color of the sky and due to lack of correct thinking conclude that the sky is blue. But if we contemplate we will find that the sky has no color at all. Equally so if a man contemplates upon the Atma he will find that it is his self non-dual without any activity or attachment. But then this Atman through delusion Maya starts recognizing the various personality layers, koshas, the world of objects, the organs of perception and action, the pranas, the mind and intellect, thus the self Atma appears to be conditioned by the body, the mind and the intellect and this apparent conditioned self is called Jiva. This ignorance can be ended only by the direct knowledge of the self. Stanza number 196 Savasya Drashtu Nirgun Saya Kriyasya Pratyag Bodha Ananda Rupasya Buddhai Brahantaya Prapto Jeeva Bhavo Na Satyo Moha Pai Nasta Vastu Sobhavat The Jeeva Hood of the Atma which is the witness which is beyond all qualities and activities and which is subjectively experienced as bliss and knowledge. Absolute is unreal and is but a delusion caused by the intellect. Since by nature it jiva hood is unreal, it ceases to exist once the delusion has been lifted. By nature the self is without action, without qualities and is constant knowledge, bliss, absolute. It is of the nature of bliss because it is a state transcending the mind and the intellect which constitute the springs of all sorrows. By delusion this Atma gets identified with the intellect and acquires jivahood. In my dream, when I am jailed, I myself enter the jail and live in it. In fact, I have not really gone to any jail. But due to the misconception in my mind, temporarily, I have the experience of being limited by the jail. When the dream ends, neither is there a jail nor is there a jailer. Similarly, when the delusion is removed, when the avidya has ended by the knowledge of Brahman, then with regard to the supreme reality, never is there any jiva hood. A delusion may give us an experience which is seemingly real. Similarly, when the delusion is removed, when the avidya has ended by the knowledge of Brahma, then with regard to the supreme reality, never is there any jiva hood. A delusion may give us an experience which is seemingly real but being a mere delusion, it has no existence sat. 
स्टैंडा नंबर 197 यावत भ्रांति स्ता वदे वाशे सत्ता मिथ्या ज्ञान अर्जय भी तस्य प्रमादात रजवाम सर्पी भ्रांति कालीन एव भ्रांतर नसी नेव सर्पी ही तद्वत है हैविंग बीन कॉज्ड बाय एन एरर ऑफ जजमेंट एंड फॉल्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग द जीवा हुड कैन एग्जिस्ट ओनली एज लॉन्ग एज द डिल्यूजन लास्ट द रूप इज मिस्टेकन टू बी द स्नेक ओनली व्हेन देयर इज एन इल्यूजन वंस द इल्यूजन इज डिस्ट्रॉयड देयर कैन बी नो स्नेक सो टू इन दिस केस कंक्लूडिंग द आर्गुमेंट Sankara tells the student that as long as there is confusion and delusion so long there will be the existence of the individuality the jiva the jiva who they exist only as long as the delusion last the delusion or non apprehension of reality gives rise to the misapprehension that i am the body i am the mind i am the intellect with reference to the world of objects there arises a feeling i am the doer with reference to the mind and intellect there arises the feeling i am the enjoyer these feelings in their aggregate constitute the jiva hood since they have risen out of delusion they will last only as long as the delusion last as long as the nature of the roop is not understood and as long as the knowledge of the roop is not fully realized so long the delusion continues and the snake vision persists in utter mental confusion alone can you have the vision of the serpent when the mental confusion has ended the snake cannot be with the knowledge of the roop the misconception that it is a snake must necessarily vanish likewise as long as the atma in us is not experienced the pluralistic phenomenal world is experienced through the instruments of the body mind and intellect there will also be the triple world of the subject the object and the relationship between them once the atma is realized the entire perceived pluralistic phenomenal world will roll away and disappear the experience of the self is gained in an immediate knowledge this experience comes not as a result of any special sadhana all sadhanas help the seeker to withdraw from the from his bmi preoccupations real knowledge comes only through intuition it is immediate in kathopanishad it is said it is like lightning it is sudden quick teaching yourself to withdraw from the worldly preoccupations take time when the mind is withdrawn from all its preoccupations the experience of the infinite is instantaneous this experience has been explained by hundreds of examples throughout the upanishads in buddhist literature it is called pragna instant consciousness intellectual analysis vidyana is necessary for certain types of students philosophy and religion are only helpful hand made to prepare the mind of the seeker for the direct and immediate experience of the infinite this infinite self is experienced not because of religion nor because of philosophy they are as much help as our pilgrimages rituals bows japa austerities tapa and meditations dhyana experience of the infinite brahma does not depend upon anything it is not a 
mediate experience meaning it is not gained through the instrument of any equipment it is not because of the teacher nor because of the scriptures however teacher scriptures sadhana study all help us to withdraw the mind from its preoccupations the mind withdraws from its pre conceptions the mind withdrawn from its preconceptions and held in attention in full alertness is the mind that receives intimations from the infinite the infinite is your essential nature it is an immediate experience stanza number 199 198 अनादित्व में विद्या कार्य सयापी तथे अस्ते उत्पन्नायाम तो विद्यायाम विद्या कमनाद्यपि स्टेंजा नंबर 199 परबोधे स्वपन वत्सर्व सह मूलम विनश्यति अनादेपीदम नो नित्यम प्र प्राग भाव इव स्फुटम सो टू अविद्या एंड इट्स इफेक्ट्स आर सेड टू बी बिगिनिंग लेस बट व्हेन देयर इज राइज ऑफ विद्या देन अविद्या इवन दो इट इज बिगिनिंग लेस इज डिस्ट्रॉयड रूट एंड ब्रांच जस्ट एज ड्रीम्स आर डिस्ट्रॉयड ऑन वेकिंग अप द फिनोमेनल यूनिवर्स इज नॉट एटर्नल इट इज एविडेंट लाइक द फॉर्मर नॉन एग्जिस्टेंस प्राक भावा वेन द कॉज इज बिगिनिंग लेस इट्स इफेक्ट मस्ट ऑल्सो हैव द सेम नेचर इग्नोरेंस अविद्या विच इज बिगिनिंग लेस मस्ट नेसेसरली प्रोड्यूस इफेक्ट विच आर ऑल्सो बिगिनिंग लेस avidya is the cause for the very first thought therefore it is beyond time but when true knowledge of the self is born when the right apprehension is born the non apprehension will have to end as long as the cause the non apprehension remains its effects the misapprehensions must also remain but there is one solvent for this great cause the antithesis of ignorance is knowledge where there is knowledge there ignorance cannot be where there is light there darkness cannot be light and darkness cannot remain in one and the same place at one and the same time the moment light is brought into a cave which might have been in darkness from the beginning of time the darkness no matter how old or how dense must immediately vanish similarly when the knowledge of the self is born the ignorance with all its effects non apprehension with all its misapprehensions will have to end though it is beginningless on waking up the dream ends fully on realizing the nature of the self the misapprehensions to their very roots the non apprehension must end not only are the misapprehensions eliminated but also their very cause the non apprehension in deep sleep the effects end but the causal body the non apprehension meaning the cause remains in the final spiritual experience the cause also ends then never will the fear of apprehensions rise in us when truth is apprehended the effects along with their cause the causal body and even though the cause is beginningless anadi though ignorance avidya is beginningless it is not eternal that which is born must die and that which is unborn cannot die but there are exceptions avidya though it is unborn will end this peculiar paradox is explained by an example 
it is clear just as prak abhava prak abhava is a technical term used by the indian logicians naikaj in nyaya shastra they employ this term freely a pot before it was made was in the mud instead of the pot there was only mud from the mud the potter cannot make a milch cow nor can he make a succulent apple he cannot create a wife for himself out of mud he can only create various kinds of pots the pot he is going to make must be potentially possible in the mud in the mud <coughs> is the potential pot in the mud is the unmanifest pot the unmanifest pot was in the mud even before the pot was made when the pot is made the pot which was hitherto unmanifest is now manifest now when was the potential pot born in the mud the possibility of the pot in the mud was beginning less anadi the possibility of the pot in the mud was born when the mud was born ne when the earth was born ne it was in the very essential nature of the earth when the pot is made the potential pot has become manifest when a pot has manifested its beginning less potential condition has ended before prak its actual manifestation the manifested pot was not there abhava <coughs> the moment it manifested its potential state which was beginning less ended so this previous non existence prak bhava is an example we example given to illustrate a beginning less thing coming to an end ordinarily that which is beginning less must be endless but vedanta says that it is possible for a beginning less thing to end how like the previous non existence of a pot when the pot has manifested its unmanifest condition which was beginning less has ended similarly says the guru even though avidya is beginning less it ends with the apprehension of reality vidya therefore though your question is beautifully put please understand that it is not a great question after all stanza number 200 anadrepi vidvans प्राग भावश विकसित युद्ध बुद्ध उपाधि संबंध धा प्री कल्पनी आत्मनी जीव तम ने तथो स्टेंजा नंबर टू हंड्रेड वन जीव तम ने तथो अन्यतु स्वरूपेण विलक्षण है संबंध सत्वात्मनो बुद्धया मिथ्या ज्ञान पुरहसर है although it is beginning less former non existence is found to have an end so to the jiva hood which is imagined to be in the atma through its apparent conditioning in the super imposed attributes like the intellect is not real but the other the self is intrinsically different from it jiva hood the relation between the atma and the intellect is due to the false knowledge the concept of in individuality has arisen because of the consciousness identifying with or reflecting in the intellect intellect is used here because the mind and the sense organs are incorporated in the subtle body this jiva bhava the individuality in its essential nature is nothing other than the atma but because of the conditionings the self the whom appears to be the pft the jiva 
if i can understand myself to be of the nature of the self the sorrows that are supplied to me through the body the mind and the intellect can be ended thus though this avidya is beginningless it has an end and in the prak bhava abhava as in the example of the beginningless non existence of the pot in the mud ending in the production of the pot from the mud if this avidya has an end o oh teacher tell us how it can be ended what is the secret technique this jiva bhavana has come about because of the intellect and so through the same intellect it should be ended the intellect turned outwards toward the oet creates the jiva hood when the same intellect is turned inwards toward the om the awakening of the atma the self takes place at this moment the intellect is functioning turned entirely outwards and is fully engaged in its busy preoccupations with the fascinating world of oet the worlds of experiences in the oet are all delusory misconceptions born out of the non apprehension of reality hence the intellect at this moment is full of wrong notions misconceptions and false knowledge mithya gyana due to the ignorance of the self the misconceptions i am the body i am the mind i am the intellect have arisen and thereafter considering myself to be the limited ego and thinking that my happiness depends upon the world of objects i find no way to gain real and lasting happiness all this is false knowledge mithya gyana when the intellect leaves its misconceptions and turns towards the eternal self then even though the avidya is beginningless it ends with the dawn of the knowledge of the self stanza number 202 vini virti bhay vivitashe sambhagyane nanyatha ब्रह्मात्मे तब विज्ञानम सम्यक ज्ञानम श्रुते मर्तम द सुप्रीम पोजीशंस विल सीज टू फंक्शन एट द डॉन ऑफ राइट नॉलेज एंड इन नो अदर वे अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्क्रिप्चर्स रियलाइजेशन ऑफ द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ द सोल एंड ब्रह्मा इज राइट नॉलेज when reality is apprehended the non apprehension of it called avidya and there is no other method by which the confusions of life created by the false ego can end at present the intellect is riddled with the illusory misconceptions such as i am the body etc this false knowledge is discussed in the previous verse now in this verse right knowledge samik gyana is being explained false knowledge mithya gyana gives the feelings i am a limited mortal a finite creature etc when this intellect now drowned in wrong notions emerges out in right knowledge samik gyana this misconception created stupid idea i am a limited creature will also end right knowledge is the first hand knowledge of the identity of atma and brahma gyana means book knowledge vigyanam is the special knowledge meaning a first hand direct knowledge the first hand experience that the atma the self in me is the one self everywhere this samyak gyana alone can remove mithya gyana stanza number 203 tad atman atmano samyak vivek nevi siddhati tato vivek hai kartavya pratyag atam sadatmano this realization comes only through right discrimination made between the self and the not self 
that's why one must strive to discriminate between the individual self within and the eternal self everywhere right knowledge samyak jnana can be gained by diligent discrimination between the self and the not self and this must be continuously done because of the past vasanas we strongly identify again and again with the matter vestures in us hence again and again we should detach from them as a result of this discrimination we come to understand the identity of the individual self within and the eternal self present everywhere samyak jnana is the antidote for mithya jnana right knowledge is the specific remedy for false knowledge right knowledge can be gained through discrimination every seeker should therefore discriminate continuously between atma and anatman until direct realization dawns in his heart stanza number 204 jalam pankvad yantam panka paye jalam saputam यथा भाति तथा आत्मा पी दोषा भावे सफुट प्रभा वाटर विच इज एक्सट्रीमली मड्डी अपियर्स एज ट्रांसपेरेंट वाटर वेन द मड हैज बीन रिमूव्ड सो टू द आत्मा मैनी फेस्ट इट्स क्लियर लक्चर वेन द इम्प्योरिटीज हैव बीन रिमूव्ड वाटर इज क्लियर इन इट्स असेंशियल नेचर वेन इट होल्ड्स मड इज suspension it is said to be muddy from a sample of muddied water if all the mud is removed what remains is the water pure and clear as it was before it got muddy likewise the atma is ever immaculate when there are impurities such as objects emotions and thoughts in the atma they create agitations in the mind and the atma is not cognized in its essential purity and infinite brilliance when these agitations and sorrows are removed from one's direct and intimate recognition the atma signs forth these impurities our false knowledge mithya jnana can be removed by right knowledge samyak jnana which can be generated only through diligent and constant discrimination as discriminate constantly is the unsaid suggestion of the acharya to the seekers stanza number 205 asanni virto to sadatmana saputam parti tretasya bhavate pritichye tato nirasah karaniye ev sadatman hai sadhav hamadi vastun hai this very individual self is clearly realized as the eternal self when the unreal ceases to exist so one must strive to completely remove the ego etc from the eternal self the bmi pft and oet are the constituents of the not self at present we are preoccupied with them when the not self is entirely eliminated at the still moment of meditation this very same pft or ego will be recognized as the pure self the sada atma when all that is the not self and its consequent agitations weak shape are removed the ego which is suffering its limitations will cognize itself to be the brahma therefore this negation of the anatman should be continued till the point of deep and total realization is reached stanza number 206 ato nayam pratma sayadi vigyanam yal shabd bhake vikari twajye vache prichin vahaitum drashe vade vibhicharitva nanityo nitte isyate for the for the following reasons the intellectual seat which we have so far spoken of cannot be supreme self 
it is subject to change it is inert and insentient it is limited it is an object of the senses and it is not constant a mortal perishable thing indeed cannot be said to be the immortal imperishable atma the vigyanamaya kosa is being negated in this verse it cannot be the atma because of the following reasons number a because it is subject to change vikarti itvad the intellectual seeth is subject to change our ideas and ideas and ideals are always changing our intelligence varies from time to time therefore this cannot be the self which is ever the same b because it is insentient jada itvad the intellect by itself is inert when the light of consciousness touches it then alone does it become sentient and shines out of the individual to think to rationalize to discriminate to judge etc c because it is limited prichinna twad every intellect has its limitations a great artist may know everything about art but he may not know anything about physics a physician may be a great genius in science but he may not know anything in politics politicians in india need not necessarily know economics a vedantin may know his vedanta but know perhaps nothing of other subject so each one may be great in his own field but not in others the intellect in every where is limited therefore the intellectual seed cannot be the unlimited infinite self the self is unlimited and undivided as the intellect cannot be the atma d because it is perceivable drishe twad we know our own intellects we say i am dull i am intelligent etc we are conscious of our intellects the intellect is an object of consciousness the object cannot be the subject the pure consciousness d because it is not constantly present vyabhi chari twad it is not constantly present faithfully serving at all times in deep sleep the intellect is not available in the waking condition it is available in a perverted condition it lives in the dream it does not work at all during deep sleep when swooning or when under chloroform at times it is available at times it is not in the waking state also we find that at times we are intelligent and other times we are dull and unintelligent therefore it cannot be the atma f because it is not eternal a nitya atvad it is mortal tangible and variable hence the intellect cannot be the self the reality which is eternal the next personality layer the bliss seat is taken up for discussion from the following verse so i conclude this video at this stage next video number 15 will start with anand mai kosa bliss seat stanza number 207 on word thank you for watching this video namaskar my dear friend thank you